Hey YouTube, Test Jazz One here. Coming up to the uh, coming up to Halloween, I uh, I want to share a good uh, thriller slasher. I suppose it's based on a 1974 film that uh, has become a cult following, really. And I it was uh, by an actor named Han Han uh, Gunnar Hansen. Yeah, unfortunately he passed away about three years ago, but he will forever live doing this film. This is the movie. It was a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The boxing is very simple. This was made by 3-0, as you can see. They provide you with t-shirts now, so I might as well show you my t-shirt. I think they uh, are going to um, change the t-shirts later on, but I'm, at the moment they're just uh, providing you their their logo. So I'm promoting their their name, 3-0. Unlike Molecule 8, this company is just it hasn't been around for long. They just started out, but they're producing figures. They're getting licensing, and they're keeping their, their dollars low. So as a collector, if you're after some horror stuff, uh, they do a variety of, of other things, but uh, if you go onto their site, check it out. It's, it's free shipping. They uh, they look after their customer. I think I had a bit of an issue with one of my uh, figures. Uh, what was it? Sill species. Uh, not long ago, I did a video which was quite popular. Uh, the the back of it had a little bit of a tail or a bit of oh, whatever. It was a finger type thing coming out the back of its uh, foot. They have since um, posted it out to me. It did take a while. They did say it was going to take a while. I was, get, I th I was th thinking that maybe I'm not going to get this part. <coughs> and someone was saying to me, oh, yeah, it's easy to glue glue it. No, it's not, it's not that, mate. It's, you, you actually pay good money to get a perfect figure. So when you unbox it, report it if it's broken. If it's not broken, enjoy it and and keep, keep it in your collection for for years to come don't glue it get it replaced but if you break it well fair enough you have to cop the consequences and then you have to glue it <clears throat> so yes 30 licensing product um they don't do stands with their figures but i did get a stand with a seal so sometimes you get a stand sometimes you don't Here's the figure, Leatherface himself, as I said, Gunnar Hansen. Very straightforward, get a few, uh, this is the Deluxe, which is the, the hammer, you get the, uh, or the sledgehammer um, comes with it. Uh, with the, the standard one, you don't get the sledgehammer. <coughs> also, his apron to chuck on. I have to say, just looking at it uh, for not a long time, but, uh, have seen uh, very good weathering. You know, I'm very impressed with their weathering, and basically the the all around detail is very good. So, well done to three zero. I'm just going to get this figure out. I'm probably going to compare it to another three zero figure, sort of promote their their, their goods, you know. So, because they're they're a very good company, and like sideshow, and like. Uh, you know, there's, there's like Enter Bay. There's a lot of uh, companies that do a lot of licensing and produce very good figures. There's, uh, I will not make the mistake in future of uh, putting my money towards dud companies, and uh, I'm not going to go on any more about that. But I will promote good quality figures that come from good, reliable companies. Okay, we'll move on. I also uh, will be including some clips. I've edited a film from the 1974 film release. I will be uh, th throwing that in just to juice up what we've got here. I uh, hope you enjoy it. It does have uh, some violence and some blood scenes, but uh, if, you're, if you're a child, please don't watch this. <coughs> uh, or get permission from your parents. Okay, let's go get this figure out and flash it to you. Slash it to you.
Sally, I hear something. Stop. Stop. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my my short video clip. I think it was for like 40 seconds. I I edited the film and uh, yeah, just to show you the the character. I did um, delete some scenes, but uh, yeah, overall, I hope you enjoyed it. Right, getting to the figure now. We're uh, all I can say is I've I've looked at the film and uh, and a documentary. I have to say, take my hats off to uh, 3.0 for uh, <coughs> the quality of work they've done to this um, sculpt. Uh, they've actually, I'm going to zoom up and just show you the, the mouth and the eyes. As you can see, the uh, the details of the uh, the eyes, uh, they've, they've concentrated on before putting the mask on. Um, putting very careful detail to the eyes, the sort of brown, the browny blackish sort of teeth, very close to <clears throat> the actual film. The, the tooth, the teeth are slightly out, uh, as in the, the character in the film. So that the attention before they putting the mask on, they've got that right. Then they put the mask on, and the mask is very, very close if not 90% close to the actual prop mask that the actor wore. Now when I uh, say what detail they've gone into, I'm just going to show you carefully that at the back of the head, they've actually got the mask stitched onto the skin of the back of the head, so it's like the the, the dead body person's hair with the skin has been put onto the back and then they've they've tied it on to keep the mask on they've done it both sides so that that's how good the attention to detail in making this figure was and is and it was important to this uh, company to to create so if you if you going back to the Early 2000s, uh, where Sideshow released the the <clears throat> the leather face, you're probably going to be uh, very excited to receive the the more detailed, updated version, and more authentic to the <clears throat> 1974 film. The hair has been great. The hair is great. It's got, there's plenty there. That's folded back so like the, the, the leather of the, the mask is pushing the hair back so plenty plenty of detail not too much yellowing uh, so the, not a lot of blood too which is good I don't think they had a lot of blood around on the, on the mask it's just a dried out sort of leather face so uh, it looks like a dried out leather face so very good very good uh, attention to detail from the the company for three zero. Now, just uh, going down the body of, uh, I will say, uh, with the with the shirt they've used in this, they probably couldn't get it any better because what they've done in the actual film, they actually washed it because of the hygiene problem that they had in the making of this film. They um, the, some of the the colouring and has dyed the shirt pink. <laughs> so they had to continue to use that shirt because they didn't have a replacement shirt for it. Uh, so I'm glad uh, 3Zero hasn't gone to the detail of putting a pink shirt on him because it would, probably would have been uh, very disappointing to see. So they've kept it white, they've just weathered it. Good move, good move, that's all I can say. The, 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 the tie detail here, I'm just going to stop the uh, rolling. The, the tie detail is very accurate to the the one used in the film, so that's um, another a thumbs up from me. I also like the uh, the seamless jointed arm, the old the elbow section does have some veining. 
and some blood smears and burns all throughout the arm grazes and yeah just a, a really really well weathered figure it's spongy it's got some sort of under cloth to, to give him that sort of fat look I mean Gunnison oh he was he was quite a, a chubby or sort of semi chubby fella but he was also six foot four <clears throat> So, um, he was a big guy. He was a really big guy. So, I like the shirt, like the tie. So far, so good. Let's go down to the pants. Also, plenty of bagginess in these pants, but not to too much bagginess where the crutch is uh, you know hanging right down to his knees or anything like that so the tailoring in the pants is very well done uh, the belt that he also carries a belt which is um it fits in quite well uh, as far as i know they're they're they're, they're bullshit pockets they're just um yeah that they they're not functioning pockets so i just uh just have a quick yeah, bullshit pockets, apart from the front ones, the front pockets do, do work. So I'll just let that spin around. Then we'll just shoot down to the boots. The boots, I do have a bit of a story to tell you in this. Yeah, the, the Texan boots were were worn in the film, so I'm glad that they have gone through the to the gone the extra mile and added the Texan cowboy boots, which is they're sort of like a thin rubbery. They do have a bit of flex in them, so you can somewhat pose them. But yeah, so there is an allowance for a little bit of pose, but there's no separation in the boot. I'm glad they've done that too. So I'll just uh, give you a close up of that. Now the story behind this was they actually t they customised the boot and they they actually put another three inches on on the boot to make him bigger than he was. So he was six foot four, and then they put three inches in his heel, which uh, gave him that uh, well six foot seven. So, so he's a really really big guy in the film. Unfortunately, he had problems running with a chainsaw uh, with these boots on, especially if he had to stop and turn. So he did uh, fall over with the chainsaw actually going. So there was some risk involved in making this film. So yeah, hats off to him for doing crazy stuff. And, and yeah, he did some crazy stuff. If you get a chance, watch the uh, 19 or the Texas Chainsaw uh, Massacre. Um, documentary the 1974 version so it's a little bit fuzzy but you do you do get a feel for the characters that uh, make the film and I thoroughly enjoyed it I watched it this morning and, and I thoroughly enjoyed it and, uh, so and and the, the the lady that was acting in it hats off to her she she got bruised and bashed and yeah she she really got tortured in the film so but uh, yeah, some great stuff to uh, to learn about that that film. So there you have it. There's really good boots. Or you would all do is just show you the flexibility in the the uh, rubber arm. So back up to him. Yeah, I'm just going to show. You, there is quite a lot of movement. Uh, it's. You can raise his arm really well. It's uh, very strong, very th hard feel of, of, of flexibility in there. It does have uh, a, probably a a good 50 cent bend, or probably a th 30. I wouldn't bend it any more than that. So it's not like double jointed in the elbow, but you don't really need to to have that. <coughs> he does stand very well. Just gonna drop his pants back down. Just gonna do a drop back shot. 
why he's spinning around I'm just going to show you the accessories we have a very detailed chainsaw very weathered unfortunately I, I, if he's going to add more to it I would have liked die cast here and probably a die cast handle but as it is I got no complaints whatsoever this is brilliant compared to the sideshow version back in 2000 this kills it absolutely kills it it's like the real thing all fueled and greasy and dirty the um, the sledgehammer bloodied this is the exclusive I um, would have liked this um, also die cast but uh, it is what it is it's a meat cleaver plastic a bone I think it might be a bone or a wood handled um, or looks like maybe a boning knife? It looks boning. It's a boning knife. Yep. Probably used to cut the skin off the face of the bodies that he uh, he wore. And this nice uh, little, possibly off a off a woman that he's killed. Um, a charm bracelet. The hook, and that uh, was used in. Uh, hooking the lady to the to the uh, well it's a butcher's hook for the hooking um, carcasses on so yeah, yeah there is a scene where the girl gets uh, attached to this I think you do see it in my film clip a little bit that's metal spare wrist pegs and of course the butcher's apron cloth strong strings attached or straps attached well sewn plenty of blood splatter there looks good a bit of yellowing from fat and all sorts of stuff that's gone on here it looks so it does look very aged and very weathered yep so I'm going to put all this stuff on and wrap up my video. Put it in the, uh, the high raising of the chainsaw position. Put his bracelet on. One of the little round metal bits fell off so I had to fiddle around with some pretty extreme magnifying glasses to to attach it back on and close the uh, link back up so yeah got that done so be careful with the chain don't lose any bits and pieces if you get it okay back to the uh, <laughs> to the chainsaw yeah no problem ho holding the uh, arms up high I did use the uh, left loose gripping hand for whatever reason that is made like that oh, I'm not too sure because I don't have any accessories to go with that hand so I'm assuming that this might be the hand that assists in holding this position so I've used it so slightly open gripping hand it does um, add to the effect of uh, holding that chain so I'm just going to go underneath on the uh, chainsaw very 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 cool figure I'm very excited to have it in my to go in my horror collection without a doubt uh, kudos to 30 for the detail of work they put into it I'll just give you another look at the accessories extra accessories I will do one more pose holding the sledgehammer also throwing uh, a couple of figures of three zeros that I have uh, that are currently 
more ones available, I think. Not too, this one was out of stock really early on, so I was lucky to, to jump on the bandwagon straight away with this one. Really, really good figure. Really, really, really good figure. I don't. I didn't have any problems uh, posing the feet in certain ways. It was, uh, yeah, there was a little bit of allowance. This, without, without doubt, is uh, an outside of custom making. Of course, this will be the uh, definitely the leather face to have. Congrats to to three zero, and yeah, I'm so glad they're focusing on horror and, and uh, like making you know the seventies eighties horror figures, which is very cool. Right, I'll uh, put the sledgehammer in his hand. While uh, disconnecting the hand, I. I thought this was a really good pose to show you as well. Just, just, just a standing pose with the holding the the chainsaw of one hand and just having that hand, that sort of semi gripping hand, just as it is. Looks very cool. Onto the sledgehammer. Last pose. The uh, Leatherface lunging forward with his sledgehammer. There's two different types of hands. One's for uh, holding the chainsaw and then the other hand, which is the one that's on, is for holding the other accessories. Which is the knife, the meat cleaver, and the boning knife. So yeah, it does pose quite well. I've got him in a sort of a running position on the feet, so it does balance quite well. Okay. Now I'll just get a couple more figures to put next to it from 3-0. I will uh, just just add in just a small small tip that in here the the hole does move around inside the rubber outer layer arm so just make sure that when you're plugging your peg in that you locate the hole properly because you may go down the side of the hole and miss it completely and that's not good this is not going to go in properly so make sure you line yourself up with the hole or get the hole centered then plug it in i think the sizes are really close like compared to this figure this guy was actually six foot four like i said before so that's pretty accurate to the height of which Michael was at that time. I think I don't think he was a very tall uh, guy that played this, the actor. So scale-wise, I think it's pretty close. And of course, you have the species figure over there still, all from Three Zero. Great products. They give you t-shirts, so there's an extra bonus on top of that. Plus, you do get the uh, license side of things, so it's. Uh, yeah, resale wise, it, it, uh, it's a definitely uh, an investment if you choose to resale it later on. That's it from me. I hope you enjoyed my video. Like I have enjoyed this figure. Test just one out. Catch ya!